There are three simple single chip ways to add pins to a microcontroller. We've already discussed MUXs, DMUXs, decoders, analog switches, and shift registers, which all use fewer pins than the method I'm about to show you, the addressable latch. This uses the most pins of any method. You still gain pins, it's still a profit. But the thing is, those other methods have drawbacks. The outputs can be spurious or require extra management if you're changing the values. Maybe not all outputs are controllable at the same time. You can only control one at a time, maybe. So this is what I consider the perfect method for functionality, if you have the pins. An addressable latch is a type of register where you've got however many outputs. And that's one thing I should mention. This is output only. There's no way to use, as far as I know, there's no way to use an addressable latch like this to have more inputs because of how the wiring works out. But if you were to use something like this, if you could figure out a way to use it for multiple inputs, it would actually be easier to use a shift register that would parallel load and then you'd read it one at a time because addressable means one bit at a time. So you're still reading one at a time anyway, and it would use fewer pins. So for inputs, use the MUX method or the analog switch method or use the shift register method. But for outputs, see, that's where most of the downsides come in, the spurious activations and having more than one on at a time. So anyway, the addressable latch has however many outputs, let's say eight, it's eight bit, just like before, You've got your three address bits, address lines. You've got your data line, but you also have your write line. Similar to a clock, you could think of it that way. So you select a bit, you put a value on that bit, and then you pulse write. Or you could hold it. You could hold write on if you wanted, and it would become a transparent latch. But it basically works as a DMUX right here. You select an output, you give it data, and it sets that output. You know, maybe it's addressed to, to that one. But because it's a latch, because it's a register, every other output retains its value. So you can control multiple devices, signals, whatever, and you change one bit at a time and everything else stays on. And the write acts as an enable, disable, so you turn writing off when you change the address pins, and then once the address pins have settled, you turn on writing, you set the data, and it sets the value. So it gets rid of the issue of spurious outputs by disabling writing without disabling the outputs. That's the thing. If you had, you know, a DMUX, let's say, and you wanted to change one of the outputs, you would have to turn off the signal or disable the chip and then change the address pins and turn it back on. The same with the shift register. You might have to disable the shift register, shift in your new values, and then turn it back on. This one, you don't turn it off. You just turn off writing because the register keeps its values in there. So when writing is off, even the one that you're setting the address for stays the same until you turn on writing. So the chip stays on, all the outputs stay stable, and you change one bit at a time. And you can change one bit. If you only need to change one, you don't need to change everything. So it's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. But you can see right now we're getting eight pins output, but we're spending five pins to do it. We're spending five pins. So we're only gaining three pins. We are gaining three pins. That's cool. But it's, it's the least efficient startup. Now, if you chain the chips, if you add more than one, then every subsequent chip is a big gain. Now, you might say, what if you only use some of the lines? Let's say you have three address lines. You have your data line, your write line, and that gets you eight output lines. But what if you only use two address lines? You can do that. You can tie it low or whatever, even if it's an 8-bit chip. So two address lines brings this total down to four, but now you're only controlling four outputs. So you're spending four pins to get four pins. So that's not going to work. So that means if you just put a four-bit addressable latch on here, you're not going to gain anything. If you use only one address pin, you're using three pins, but you're only controlling two, you're actually losing a pin. So obviously you're going to need to go to at least an 8-bit, an 8-bit is nice and convenient, an 8-bit latch at minimum for a single chip gain. Otherwise, it's just not going to get you anything. However, they chain really well. So let's say here's your one data, write, address, and out. So five pins goes to eight. Let's add another chip. The data line is shared. The address lines are shared. 
there's a new write line and you get another eight outputs. Now, why does this work? Because you have one pin to tell each chip right now. You're, you're turning on and off the writing for each chip individually. So the same data signal and the same address signal is on both. You're essentially trying to write the same value into the same bit on both, but only one of them actually does it because they have separate write signals. So if you add a chip, you're adding only one pin. You're adding one additional write pin. So you go to six, but you're adding eight more outputs. So that's 16. See, the initial investment, the initial investment is costly, but thereafter, you spend five pins to get three pins additional, but then you spend only one more pin to get eight more or seven more. And you can do it in parallel if you want. Here's the thing. If at any point you want to write the same bit into both of the same address of the register, let's say you want to put a one in bit three of both of these, at any particular moment, you can. And all you do is you set the data line, you set the address lines, and you set both write lines. So you don't have to set data and write and address on both chips. If for whatever reason you need to set the same value, you can save setting data and address. And then anytime you don't want to do that, see it's all in software. If you don't want to do that, then you just set each one individually. So it's no faster. Actually, it's even slower. It's slower than a shift register because a shift register is set the data, pulse, set the data, pulse, but you gain the benefit. Once again, this is where you have more pins to spare, a little more time to spare, in this case, setting one bit at a time, but you don't want the outputs to change when you don't tell them to, and you want them always to be on, not just one on at a time. Plus, the shift register is only faster when you're setting all the bits. If most of the bits never change, and you only change one bit every once in a while, it's going to be faster to use the latch, because you just set, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, to turn this on and off, so that's six, and you set one bit. And then, if you are using a shift register, you set the data, so that's one, and you shift two, three, but you got to do that for every bit. You either have to have it circulating and you interrupt, like you, you circulate the bits and then you overwrite the one you want as it passes by, or you have to write all eight bits. So that becomes 24, three times eight, or, you know, eight plus however many to turn some transistor or switch on or off to rewrite one bit as you circulate it around. Serial shift registers are only really useful for doing all the bits when you need to do all the bits, all of them input or all of them output. They're not really good for any situation where you're trying to change them asynchronously or at least one at a time. So once again, there you go. All three methods are better or worse in different situations. And there's more complicated methods or more complex methods rather using additional types of chips. This was just the simple. You have a box of these or a box of these or a box of these. So like I said, I'll get into fancier stuff combining things like a mux and a counter, or even these in a counter, to get the infinite nature of a shift register with the benefits of this. More chips, more function. Until then, I'll be seeing you.